Hey everyone, welcome to Mandala Mondays. And today we discuss another law of karma from our series on laws of karma. And this is called the law of cause and effect. As I've explained in the past, the Sanskrit word karma is really the word karam. And the A in the, in the end is romanizing of Sanskrit or Hindi words by the British. So it's also called Kam in Pali and Prakrit languages. These are more ancient than Hindi or even maybe Sanskrit. Pali is the language that was spoken in the area where Buddha is from and Prakrit is what Mahavir, the Jain Tirthankara spoke. So basically all these words, Karam, Kam, they mean action and is defined as intention manifested in the deed of thought, body and speech. So even the intention produces karma, not just the act itself. For example, if you are sitting in a room and being depressed or sad, so you are still generating karma for yourself and you will have consequences for that. Or let's say you are sitting and uh, you're just giving an ill wish to someone. You're not really acting upon it, but this is in the thoughts. So you, according to the karmic law, you still will generate karma for yourself and will have consequences. And I've explained it in detail in my video on what is karam. So in a way, karam refers to the spiritual principle of cause and effect, which states that an action is always accompanied by its consequences. And this is exactly like um, Newton's third law of motion, which states for each and every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. And uh, the beauty is, no one can escape the effect of their actions. So anything, good or bad, one does, even through their thoughts, and just, as I just explained, words or senses, it creates an equivalent response which comes back to, to them sooner or later in one form or the other. So basically how it's spoken, as one sows, uh, so shall he reap. And this dogma known as the karmic cycle it governs one's life constantly and works under the law of cause and effect. So simply put, skillful actions that lead to good karmic outcomes are based upon the motives of uh, generosity, for example, compassion, kindness, sympathy, clear mindfulness, or wisdom. And the opposite motives of uh, greed or hatred or the delusion when acted upon they lead to bad karmic results. Everyone in this world is subject to the great chain of causes and consequences, successions of rebirth and death called karmic law. So the cause is generally compared to the seed and the consequences to the fruit and the fruits of karam are harvested in the form of happiness or misery depending on the nature of the acts committed. And uh, we know that in this world, nothing happens to a person that he does not deserve. And same as that there are no coincidences or accidents or mistakes in the universe. So the definite invisible cause or causes of the visible effects, it is not necessarily confined to the present life. They may be traced to a near or remote past birth. Now, according to this law of cause and effect, whatever thoughts or energy you put out, you get back in the same way, good or bad. And in order to get what you want, you have to embody and be worthy of those things. The concept is if you plant a rose bush, you're only going to get roses out of it, right? Uh, you cannot get um, lilies. So, for example, if you want love in your life, you have to be loving to yourself. However, what um, most people in the Western world do not understand is that the result of a deed is present in the deed itself. Okay, the way Buddha explains it is that you will not be punished for your anger, but you will be punished by your anger, right? So the consequence is present in the deed itself. So there is no higher power involved that gives rewards and punishments. You simply act with intent and experience the consequences of your own actions. That is, you are responsible for your own actions and what you experience in life are the consequences of those actions or deeds. 
So therefore, you create a life of, um, therefore you create your own life and not a higher power or God or divine, whatever you may call, they are not creating the present life you are experiencing. You have caused this to happen. So even the divine cannot interfere in your life because the entire universe is bound by the law of cause and effect and even the highly spiritual beings, they are bound by the same law. So I can uh, explain a little, for example, let's say there's a thief and his action is that he steals something or his action is stealing. Now we can anticipate the future. So somebody else is not making his future, he's making his own future and uh, he will be caught at some point and will have to face consequences of their actions. Now in the same example that um, it can cause a long chain of more wrong actions, that is the, from the same thief, for example, the intention is to steal. However, in order to fulfill that task, there might be other dreadful actions that they might have to do. And so the effects would be many, and me and severe and uh, but this but this thief's actions will have consequences not just for the thief himself or herself but for other people uh, as well and for the universe as well just like a ripple effect so when you throw a stone in water what happens the ripples are caused and these ripples will have effect on others also in untold ways and at some point they will come back to you so what we gain from previous actions is like an echo and we cannot escape its results so as i just explained you may call this as action and reaction whichever one it is the principle that whatever you do it will have a corresponding effect on the future not just yours, but of all the future that is other lives and the universe itself. That's why it's said that the life you are experiencing right now, you are the one who has caused it or made it. So thus karam or the karma, it can affect how you lead your life, either with the fear of consequences or with anticipation of future rewards. However, as you begin to understand the concept of karma, you will understand that there isn't a devil sitting around with a big stick there to beat you when you do something wrong uh, as a way of leveling the score. In contrast, it is a universal law and has far more significance and meaning for your own awareness and success in life that you can, than you can ever imagine. So a deeper understanding of this law of cause and effect can help you make the move from the, from the victim mentality to empowerment. If you truly and deeply understand this law of cause and effect, as my intention is to help you understand it, you will find an awful lot falling away from you. All those negative thoughts about life, especially the repet repetitive ones, they will drop off when you come to realize that everything that happens to you has been caused and created by you yourself. That, that means you can control your life, right? And it doesn't mean that everything is set in stone and we are just the robot or the puppets. No, you can, uh, you can make your life happen. So among the causes and effects that span the three existences of the uh, past, present, and future, good and evil actions, they become the cause of karma, which eventually manifests as good or evil, painful or pleasurable effects. So there are two facets to the causes and effects of karma. The first is the case where the natures of the cause and effect are the same. For example, uh, through a person's greedy conduct, which is the cause, his heart becomes more stingy or shameless, which is an effect. In this case, there is, a, there is a flow of intimacy between the cause and the effect, right? So the other case is where the natures of the cause and effect, they diverge. So in this instance, a good cause produces a pleasurable effect, 
while a bad cause produces a painful result. So one's fortune is a result of the karmic cause that is made. However, the time when one will receive that karmic effect can vary. The karma created in the present lifetime, there are three periods for the results of this karma. That would be that meaning the results can be experienced in the present life or the next lifetime or even after two or three lifetimes. Basically, the principle is that anyone who is born, they have to die and they have to be reborn. So this cycle continues until the soul has um, learned all the wisdom or it has reached enlightenment. So uh, Lord Krishna in Bhagavad Gita, he has provided mankind with the science of spirituality and a way of life by which the doctrine of uh, karma, the natural order of cause and effect can be transcended. So this state of trans transcendence cannot be achieved by an arbitrary interference with the laws of nature, but it can be experienced by breaking the chains of karma through cultivation of an attitude of detachment. The law of cause and effect is uh, impeccable and it is totally unbiased, yet it can be transcended, like I just said, by gaining knowledge of one's true nature. When one realizes himself to be the imperishable soul, he attains that realm of reality which is beyond the burden of karma, meaning now this, this soul is out of the cycle of life and death. So this is the state of being which is beyond any sorrow and that is the goal of uh, our soul. So to conclude, it is an individual accumulation of good or evil karma and also his dominating character traits, good or evil, which affect the karmic result. So this law of cause and effect could also be seen as the law of moral causation. So I hope you can use this karmic law uh, to design a life of your dreams. And remember, there are no coincidences or accidents in the universe meaning if you thoroughly if you if you are thoroughly intent on what you want you will definitely get it. this is all for today and um, i hope you enjoyed this video and if you like this information that i provided you could give it a like and even subscribe so you will know when i post another informational yet helpful video for you for example i'll see you next week on uh, Mandala Monday with, with the other karmic law, which is called the law of creation. Okay, thanks for watching and take care. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.